So I recently got a comment on one of my videos asking if it was possible for me to go through my Warframe settings and my OBS settings, as they were having a bit of trouble getting that stuff set up. And for some reason I seem to get my Warframe settings reset like once a month, so I thought it was a good idea to document all of this anyway, and I might as well do it in video form to help others. So I'm just going to go through all my settings in Warframe, then all my OBS settings, and I'll also show off just my key bindings and my, I guess my compression process as well. So, yeah, this, uh, this reset again earlier today. I've just gone through and reset everything. Most of it is default, but I turn off a bunch of things like uh, auto swap on empty and context action, including reload, just because that sort of throws me off in the heat of combat. All the sensitivity and stuff is just default, I believe. Gameplay, this is all default except play a toggle between North America and Oceana, occasionally. Turn off all the useless chats. These two, no, these two, uh, when I'm recording, it stops this private message box popping up, so I can still get messages, but they won't open until I open the chat window. And they won't, like, if I get someone sending me a message here, I won't get it written into clan or recruit or wherever else as well. So that's quite handy. Emojis off, clearly. Uh, I don't know if anything's different in here. I know when I first started playing... This is off by default, and that is not something you want. And that shows the player names in the top right. I think I turn HUD motion off. Everything else is default. Display, borderless full screen. I limit the frame rate. Field of view on maximum, it's usually down here. I don't know why anyone would ever play like that. Usually have that off. I was testing it with the idlons, and it doesn't seem to do anything, but keep it off anyway. All of this is on. I have the particle system quality set to low because when you're using things like the Pox or the Mutualis Quanta, it like really makes their clouds like far more transparent than they would be usually. So instead of like actually blocking your view, you can still clearly see the enemy you're firing at, which I find to be quite handy. Motion blur, turn that off, and color correction seems to do some weird things. So I've just found that I prefer that off. And these two, it's it's unappealing to have just big energy streaks following you everywhere you go, in my opinion. That's what I use for recording. They love turning uh, this on, which is fine, but with the Xenostar it procs every... or it makes the sound with every proc, and that just drives me nuts, so that's off. This is off immediately, they love turning it back on, but that just get, that's the first thing I change every time. That can just get, get the hell out of here. Default, because that's all set up in my actual uh, computer settings. So I'm going to go through my key bindings as well, but before I do that, I'm going to show my gear, my gear wheel. And you'll see why in a minute. So I've got the energy pads. I've got an Arcwing launcher there at the moment, but that would usually be the shield pad. So we've got energy, health, ammo, and shield. Synthesis scanner. Ancient Healers, Air Support, Cypher. These two, uh, they change a lot. This is where I'd put the Infested Catalyst and the Phylaxis. But because we've got the Razorback, that's in here. And if I'm like actively fishing, I'll have all three fishing spears here, just for convenience. And the Nozum Cutter. So now that I've shown that, go back in and look at the keybinds. I think most of it is fairly normal. So I use E for my use key, obviously. Now Quick Melee is on numpad 1, and the reason for that is I have a mouse that has extra buttons all over the place. Four on the side, or five on the side, I guess. This is more of a toggle, and a whole bunch on the top. So num1 here is referring to this point where this line is connecting to. So it's like right next to my left click, and it's just very convenient, very easy for me to reach. Melee attack says mouse one here. But that's because when I equip my melee, it swaps around uh, what does what. Go away. So yeah, when I equip it, it's mouse one, which is normal. Melee block is mouse five for me, which is where is that? It's on the side. Uh, this one, no, this one. So it's. Basically that's where my thumb rests, my thumb sort of rests right in here so it's very easy for me to reach up to that. 
So that's my blocking one, and that does other things when I am... Uh, ch -ch -ch. Like, it's only melee block when I'm holding a melee weapon. Otherwise that brings up my scanner, I think. Probably should have gone in-game and just double-checked everything. I'm not very good at remembering these things, but muscle memory does everything in the moment. So anyway, that's melee block, melee channel, uh, mouse 2, which you usually aim, mouse wheel to scroll up and down, changing between weapons. As I said, quick melee, item pop up, default, abilities 1 through 4, and then I have my focus, which most people have set to 5, and 5 by default, I assume, is number 3. So that's back on my top, and it's over here. So you can see where the blue line meets up to number 11 over here. And that's just very easy for me to reach instead of aiming, I can just toggle between that and that's particularly useful now that uh, Arcane Ener uh, sorry, Energizing Dash is so prevalent and you have to use it all the time and as well as the sets for healing, uh, Magus Elevate because I have two sets of them and I basically use that in every single mission ever so it's just really convenient to have it there. Some of these things like use selected power I don't think I've ever used outside of a macro and very rarely at that. Reverse camera is H, I think, by default. I have it on F, and I use that all the time to look around corners. It just brings the camera from having your Warframe on the left of the screen, and it moves it across to the right, so you can sort of peek around. Very useful if you're using like, hit, scan we hit scan weapons to look around corners and such. Push to talk when I'm talking in Discord is set to G, but I, you know, I never talk to people in games, so that's irrelevant. This is where the gear hotkeys are. So I should have taken a photo of my gear. I'm going to do that real quick. So I'll go back to Arsenal, gear, freeze the screen, take a snap of that. And I'll jump back into key bindings. All right, so the gear hotkeys. You can see that 5, 6, 7, and 8. So five, six, seven, eight. This is what they would be toggled to. Then we got numpad five, which is the gear hotkey two. So that's the sy synthesis scanner. What was that? Uh, num five. So it's back on the side, and that is the melee block button when I'm not actually holding a melee. We got num four, which is ancient healers. Uh, sorry, gear slot four which is num4. Come across here and that's back on the top, I believe, num4. It's the very uh, front uh, button, so there's two on each side there. Very front. Gear 6 is num2, so 6 is the cipher. Uh, sorry, that's the air support, which I have set to Lisset, so you can uh, pause like spy timers or you can disable uh, lockdowns if you're busting corpus windows which happens too damn frequently. Yeah, so what was that? Yeah, 6, so num2. That's on the other side, I believe. Yep, up the top there, number 10. So all of these things can be done just by opening the gear menu, but I just really like having it all... having it all on the mouse. It's all quick and easily accessible, and I don't have to bring up that window when I'm recording videos, which is just something that I really like. So yeah, that's why that's like that. 9 and 10 which are these two are the ones that are uh, flowing like I'll use the I'll change those quite frequently as I said before and it is this which is it's like a toggle on my mouse uh, it, there's a lot of mouses where you can actually push the mouse wheel to the left or right and it will count as a trigger so it's basically the same concept but it's on the side of the mouse so that my thumb can use it so instead of pushing here you push here and you know it's is literally just totally pushy the way it does two different triggers very simple and then 11 and 12 so 11 is my fishing rod which is set to uh, num plus so we find that one that yeah, num plus so this is another toggle basically the same as that it's you think it would be very easy to use but it's not something my fingers at least uh, they can't really use that while I'm using all this other stuff so I've got that using the fishing rod that way and the mining tool that way, just so it is accessible, but it's in a place that isn't uh, extremely extremely quick, because you don't really need that stuff to be quick. So yeah, fairly simple. 
Get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. I'm also going to show you my OBS settings, which you can see I'm recording now. You can see my mic going crazy. Let's jump into the settings. Most of this is basic, most of it's default. So I'm just going to scroll through that pretty quickly. I haven't done any streaming. The recording output with the bitrate at 8000. I've got the audio tracks uh, separated, which I can show, but not in here. Most of this is default, except I've. Uh... It's interesting because I have all these virtual cables here so that I can record and I can split my game audio, my audio, like from my microphone, any audio I get from, say, if I have a music player running on my other screen, or any dings I get from Discord, or if I'm talking in voice in Discord, they'll all appear on separate audio tracks. So that's why this is the way it is. Can't really. Uh, you can see it that these are ticked because I'm using five different audio tracks. But uh, the person that was specifically asking for this uh, video is just doing it for the challenges, so it doesn't really need any of that. Mm -hmm. So I record 60 frames a second and at 1080p, everything I record is like that, even though when I upload it's only 30 frames at 720 because my internet is just Australian garbage. Not really particularly useful. Hot key, start, stop, and advance. I don't think I've actually messed with anything in here. No. That's my basic settings for that. If I go into. Not sure where that shows up. Interesting. Might be in here. Yeah, there it is. So you can see the tracks up the top. When you have one regular track, so it would start off with desktop audio. It would just have all of these ticked, or just one of them ticked. But if you have editing software that's capable of splitting audio tracks, like I use VideoPad Editor, which is very basic, very simple. It's basically notepad of video editing when you compare it to things like Sony, uh, Sony Vegas or Premiere Pro. It's like super, super basic. But it does what I want to do. So that can't do it, but if I need to split these audio tracks open in Premiere, and that can do it, so it saves my microphone to 3, saves these two, which is uh, music and Discord, they're 4 and 5. And it also saves all of them on a single track, because when you listen back to it with, uh, say, VLC player, which is my default, it's that program is also very basic and it's not smart enough to pick up multiple tracks. So I just have it all on here so that when I'm previewing something, I can still hear everything. And if I do need to split things up, I can. So that's how that's set up. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is. There's tutorials for it on YouTube already. So if you need to work out how to do such with OBS, you can. I almost closed that. I'm glad I didn't. I'm also going to show just very briefly, this is just some recording I was doing for uh, speedruns in the dojo, testing it without the Arcane Menticide helmet. So we're going to properties here. Just wanted to show you again that I am in fact recording at 1080 and at 60 frames a second. And then if I were to open that in VideoPad, which as I said is very basic, bring that in here, let's drop it into our track. Now, as I said, this is all at 1080, so if I were to upload this to YouTube, it would probably take me half an hour, just because Australian internet. But when I export, and this can be done in any, any editing uh, software, obviously, the resolution is just set down to 720, and the frame rate is at 30. So it still comes through fairly well. It's, you know, I'd love to be able to upload at 1080 or higher, even at 60, but I just can't can't afford the time that it takes because whilst I'm uploading, we can we can't really stream video or surf the internet at all. And I have my partner living in my house with me, so I can't like shut her internet off for days at a time, well hours at a time, sometimes days if they're long enough. 720 is as good as I can go. Let's say. Probably a bit more in depth than I expected it to be, showing off all my settings. Just let that save. Oh yeah, you can check out my puppy eating Ember, seeing as she got nerfed. Hmm.